Is Shimano really intent on killing mechanical road bike group sets or does it maybe, hopefully, have something planned for the people's group set? Now, when 105 DIT launched just a few short weeks ago, the reaction to it was surprising and quite shocking. This is a group set, let's remember, that many people, many of you watching at home, and myself included, have been waiting for a very, very long time. And here it is, finally. But the reception was fairly lukewarm. And I think there's a few reasons why. Firstly, there's a price, there's a weight, we'll talk about those more in a bit. But mostly, I think it comes down to the fact there's no mechanical shifting option and there's no rim brake option. Those really touch quite a few sore nerves. So in this video, I wanna share some thoughts on what Shimano might have planned in the future, where I think it should go, and whether this really is the end of mechanical shifting at the top end of Shimano's road bike group set range. So let's dive in. It goes without saying that mechanical shifting is dead at the top end of Shimano's range. When Durace and Ultegra 12-speed semi-wide group sets were announced earlier this year, the company also quietly confirmed there would be no new mechanical versions of a group set. So buy up the current group sets in mechanical form while you still can. And that makes sense. At the top end of the road cycling world, especially the performance focus, pro peloton, on Tour of France world, mechanical shifting is dead and electronics are king. In the Tour of France peloton right now, all the Shimano riders are on DI2 electronic group sets, bar a few exceptions when the likes of Pete Sagan roll out a mechanical group set for a cobble stage or Paris Bay. All the riders are on electronic group sets and it's the same for Campag and SRAM as well. And that shift to electronic shifting is also reflected at the amateur and very serious road racer level as well, where Ultegra is a very popular group set. And then there's also the other fact that many modern aero road race bikes aren't designed for mechanical shifting at all. They are electronic only. And that's simply because routing a gear cable through the handlebars into the stem and through the stereo tube into the frame is very tricky compared to snaking a wire, which is much easier. And now with wireless and semi-wireless, it's even easier. But 105 has a much wider audience and a wider range of price points on the bikes it's available on. Some call it the people's group set, but personally, I'm not so sure. Claris, Sora, Tiagra are always much more affordable than 105, but 105 does offer that Ultegra Durace kind of race focus in a more affordable package, so I guess that's where they're coming from. Now, it's worth adding that when Shimano launched 105 DI2, while the focus was on disc brakes and electronic shifting, and there was no mechanical version of the group set launched at the same time, it didn't actually say there would be no mechanical group set just didn't mention it at all. But that hasn't stopped people going to the conclusion that there won't be a mechanical 105 group set going forward. But Shimano hasn't confirmed or denied that is the case. So my hunch is that unlike Durace and Ultegra, which are electronic only for the reasons of pro racing and that top level performance, that 105 will continue to offer a mechanical version. Now, whether that's a current 11 speed option that we currently have, or whether it's a new 12 speed version that hasn't been launched yet, but might be launched in the future, which would be really exciting to see, a 12 speed mechanical group set remains to be seen. The verdict is definitely out on that, but I think it's too soon to write off a mechanical 105 group set in the future. Now, from a pricing point of view, when you look at Shimano's range, having a mechanical 105 group set makes a lot of sense. You have Durace at the top, very expensive, Ultegra not quite as expensive, and the new 105 DI2 sort of fills the gap that Ultegra mechanical groups that used to be in. In terms of price, the new 105 DI2 is 900 pounds more than the current 105 mechanical, but 600 pounds less than Ultegra DI2 above it. So in terms of that pricing structure, it makes a lot of sense. 105 DI2 where Ultegra mechanical was, and the current or a new mechanical 105 below it to give a nice progression from Sora, Tiagra, Claris, 105 Mechanical, 105 DI2, Ultegra Electronic, and Dual Race Electronic to complete that range. But if Shimano does continue to offer the people group set in a mechanical form, what will it look like? Will it be the current 11 speed that we know and love? Will it be a rim brake option as well as hydraulic disc brakes? Or will it come out with a brand new revamped 12 speed option, which would be quite exciting to see? There has been no 12 speed Dual Race and Ultegra, and the reason to suspect there won't be a 12 speed 105 is because the way Shimano does stuff, they launch it at Durace level and then trickle it down. 
But the way electronics are dominating at the top level, but there's still a clear need for mechanical at the lower price point, might they actually innovate and develop a new mechanical version at this mid-level range rather than at the top end and bring it down to a lower price point. And it should be fairly easy, he says, to upgrade the current 11-speed mechanical group set to a 12-speed mechanical group set. All you need are new shifters, new internals inside, so a small tweak there, a new rear mech, but we already have the chain, cassette, chain rings, and all the other stuff we need for that 12-speed group set to work. So upgrading from 11 to 12 speed, I reckon should be fairly easy. A nice simple upgrade to keep Mechanical 105 in the range and keep it current. And having both 105 Mechanical and DI2 group sets gives you a nice upgrade option. Buy a bike with Mechanical 105 and you could upgrade with new shifters and front and rear mechs to a electronic version of that group set at a later date. The other really sore point with the release of 105 DI2 was a price. So it's an expensive group set compared to 105 Mechanical, but it's a lot cheaper than Durace and Ultegra. So compared to them, it is more affordable. And people are rightly, I guess, comparing 105 DI2 to Mechanical 105, but I think that's a mistake. It's clearly not the same group set, one Mechanical and one is Electronic, and there's never been a 105 DI2 to compare the new group set to. So comparing it to, or expecting it to be the same price at current 105 is wrong. And looking at Shimano Ultegra and Durace, the DI2 group sets have always been more expensive than their mechanical counterparts. Why? I don't know. It's new technology, all that development time, I guess. And we can't really sit here and speculate on whether manufacturing a mechanical group set is cheaper or more expensive than a electronic version. That's something that only Shimano know, and we'll probably never know the real story on how expensive each group set is to manufacture. But generally speaking, new is always more expensive. It works in a bike world, it works in the iPhone world, camera world, TV world, new stuff, all that development time costs more money than old stuff, which has been around for a long, long time. I mean, Shimano have been doing mechanical group sets for a really long time. So all that development costs have been well soaked up. They got the manufacturing process to a T. So the cost of manufacturing the mechanical group set is probably fairly cheap. Perhaps the biggest challenge of 105 DI2 isn't from Ultegra or mechanical, but from SRAM's rival ETAP AXA group set launched just two years ago. They're both third tier group sets and on paper, they are very comparable. But on paper, I think SRAM's third tier group set is arguably a better option. It's cheaper by quite a big margin, just 1,268 pounds without a power meter or 1,470 pounds with a power meter and there's no power meter option with 105 DI2, remember. And on the scales, Rival is only about 100 grams heavier than 105 DI2. I'll do a bigger comparison of 105 DI2, once I get my hands on it, with a SRAM Rival ETAP group set, which I have on my giant TCR down in the garage below. So a sub to the channel would be fantastic. And comparing the price of 105 DI2 to SRAM Rival ETAP Axis does make you wonder if Shimano had priced it too high. If they go on to closer to that rival group set, so 1,200 or 1,500 pounds, I think the price would have been less of an issue when it launched it two weeks ago. But pricing it at 1,700 pounds is quite a big price tag and quite a jump up from a SRAM rival ETAP axis, which is a comparable group set in terms of being third tier, in terms of weight and in terms of features. So I think the price is definitely perhaps a bit too high, but I'm sure Shmire know what they're doing. At least I hope they know what they're doing. Right, those are my thoughts and predictions on whether we'll ever see a 12-speed mechanical 105 group set in the future. I've got my fingers crossed that we will do. Okay, if you want to see a review of the current 12-speed Shimano Durace DI2 group set, then check the video linked right here. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel by hitting this button right here. That's all for now though. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again very soon.